Hi, my name is Julianne Bamford. I am the librarian at Canyon Creek. Mary Stanley is our library assistant extraordinaire. I wanted to give parents who might be unfamiliar with our library a quick orientation of how it is set up. Before we start, I will be explaining mostly by average grade levels to give you a better understanding of reading levels. Everyone reads at a different level and pace, so this may not fit each child perfectly, and we encourage students to discover what their own just right book level is. First, we have our everybody books. These are picture books usually geared towards kindergarten to second grade, but can go all the way up to fifth. The call number label on the spine of everybody books, such as this big favorite, has an E for everybody on top and three letters on the bottom. For most books in our library, these are the first three letters of the author's last name. In this case, W-I-L for Willems. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to make changes for our students to have the best access. For example, Pete the Cat is under P-E-T for Pete because some newer versions have different authors. Next, our chapter books are for students who are starting to transition from picture books to novels. This can usually be anywhere from kindergarten to third grade, but we still have fourth and fifth graders reading them too. They are included as a genre in our fiction novel section and have an F at the top of their call number with a chapter book sticker on the spine. The most famous series in this section is Magic Treehouse, which are shorter, easier to read novels with a few pictures. There are several other kinds of chapter books though. Some, like the Boris series, are like longer picture books but set up in chapters. And others, like Owl Diaries, have even more words, and then Dragon Masters, which has even more words and fewer pictures. Don't let those pictures worry you, though. They're really important to help students decode what they're reading as they become stronger readers. When students are ready to move on to longer or higher level books, we have our fiction section, which is separated into nine main genres that are housed together in one area. The graphic novel and chapter book genres are in their own sections. Our nonfiction books are organized by the Dewey Decimal System, which assigns a number range to specific subjects. All grade levels are lumped together in this section, which wraps around in a big U in the main area of the library. Our nonfiction uh, section carries anything from math to sports to robot science to animals to even this student favorite series, True or False. Nonfiction call number has the Dewey Decimal number on the top, and like our other books, the first three letters of the author's last name underneath, unless it is a biography. Then it would have the subject's last name instead of the first three letters of the author's last name, like this book about Lionel Messi. They also usually have a biography genre sticker on the label. Finally, we come to the extremely popular graphic novels. They're cataloged with the nonfiction books, even though most are fiction, but they're housed in their own section right by the comfy reading area. The call number label has the graphic novel Dewey Decimal Number 741.5 and the first three letters of the author's last name. Graphic novels geared towards our younger students have an E for everybody on top. Oh, and of course, a graphic novel genre sticker. I urge you not to be turned off by graphic novels. As a parent and reader, they're not my favorite either. However, as a teacher, I know that they really are beneficial. Most graphic novels are nothing at all like the comic strips we used to read in the Sunday paper. They have plot and character development, just like a print novel. The images give an overview of the story, which is great for kids who don't like reading. And the images reinforce, not replace, the language and text. Even some of our favorite classics are being turned into graphic novels now. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to get a chance to meet you in person soon, and I would love to have you volunteer in the library when things get back to normal. I am creating another video with student favorites and recommendations. Please let us know if you have any questions. The best way to contact us is by email. Sometimes it's hard to get all the way across the library to answer the phone. Happy reading!